Happy Friday, this is Jonathan. I just want to put together a quick video on the Compact 3, how to go in and do some testing from the optimization screen. If you have your configuration open, it'll show you what the software is configured as. So if you have a unit that is, say, a T30 or a T40 unit on the hardware, you can actually dumb it down to a base amplifier so the software configuration can always dumb down and turn off different options that you're not using so if you have a t30 or t40 unit you would program it in the code assist v2.3 but if you configured it as say an i12 t11 it would turn off the t30 t40 programming and it would just be a simple indexer the i10 t10 is a simple amplifier run with an analog torque or velocity or step and direction. This unit here I have configured as an I31T11, so it's an EtherCAT slave device being controlled from an external pack. Uh, I'm actually going to control it from the optimization screen. So I've already have the, the motor configured, I've already downloaded it. So if I go into the optimization screen, go into uh, normal mode or you can click to open the optimization tool you can double click on the left or you can single click on the right this will open up the four quadrants so you've got a four channel oscilloscope here um, and then you have the drive display the complex 3 error history will upload the last 31 different errors there are separated by a quit which is the error acknowledgement so you can have multiple errors at the same time here motor temperature and the feedback too low that the cable was unplugged uh, the motor temperature is a normally closed thermal switch inside of the motor um, that opens up when it gets too hot so you can look at the error and to look at the error what you can do is go into the Help file, search error, open up the error list, and it'll show you this is the hex number and the decimal number of that same hex code. So in the optimization screen, it shows you the, the hex number. So let's say 4310 yeah, just as an example then you can do a control f on this page 4310 and that jumps you down gives you symptom cause and remedy of, of what um what caused that error so that's how to look up more details on the error let's go back into the optimization screen so you have four quadrants here in the status display. It's just a watch list on the bottom right hand corner is the status values. So this has the most common objects used for your drive. So on an I10 T10 in torque mode, it's not going to show the position because you're running the drive in torque mode. But uh, So if you go into like the drive, you can see the DC bus voltage that would tell you uh, I've got 120 volts AC into my unit, which is full wave rectified into 167. So whatever the AC voltage is coming into the drive times 1.414 should be close to what your DC bus voltage is. Um, the drive utilization is the percentage of how much current that you're running from. Uh, that's based on the percentage of the drive. There's also one similar to the percentage of the motor for the percentage rated current, which is at rated speed, and then also the peak current. And if you want to know in terms of how much current the motor is configured for, go into the drive configuration back on the main screen and So this motor is set, the nominal drive current is 2.5 amps because I've got an SO25V2. Um, you can't change the motor just going into the motor, but you can see what the motor is rated for here in this screen. 
at the higher level um, V4 units, you have to tell it if it's uh, 230, 400, or 480 volts AC, and out, out at higher speeds, there's more of a drop off uh, because of the spinning losses of the motor for the higher pole count. So uh, this will change based on the voltage on the V4 units. Uh, my unit's a V2, so the SO25 and the SO63 V2 are 120, 230 volts AC. Anyway, um, moving on forward um, the other item I like to take a look at is actually the position this is the actual position and the target position your units will probably be different than mine the ethercat units are all done in increments so I've got 8,000 counts per rev so um, your configuration back in the main screen your units will be set here. So it could be inches, millimeters, degrees, or increments. So uh, the position will be based on those units and that um, setting in the drive configuration. If you go into the setup tab, you can actually grab control of this. So this will kick the pack offline and I'm grabbing control from my PC locally. So I can energize here. Uh, it will uh, disable the brake. I can also manually disable the brake if there's a brake on the motor. Um, so I can jog it here. What speed is that? Um, if I click the enter setup test move parameters, or this is also jumped from the parameter tab, go into uh, general setup tabs. Here's my jog velocity. This is uh, set by default based on the drive configuration. There's also, uh, you can set up a relative test move, which is just running continuously in the same speed, in the same direction, pardon me. Um, may not be appropriate if it's a linear actuator. For a linear actuator, I would actually use the absolute test move, so you can set it up to move between two, two positions. Um, this will be based on your zero position, so if it's an incremental encoder or a resolver, you power it up, it thinks it's at zero. Um, So if you need to reset the zero position, you would need to do a homing first. Um, let's just set this up to be moving between zero and 8,000 counts, just as a test. Now on the scope, Take the actual position, and then I can drag that over, and I, the actual speed, and then I'm also going to display the motor utilization percent rated current. Uh, this, I think, is set to normal by default if you just toggle it. I like to use roll and just then start measure. It will still the oscilloscope and I like to drag the values up to the watch list to see approximately what the values are so I, then I can get my vertical scaling uh, correct. And it's an increment, so I'm gonna need to set that to a couple thousand to see it because I'm moving between zero and 8,000. And if your units are millimeters or inches, it may be less on that scaling. So if I start moving. So now my motor is moving back and forth between one revolution. I can see the actual speed and the actual position. And the, there is no load on the motor, so the percentage of the current of the motor being used is negligible. Okay, so uh, the other thing is if you, if you have an actuator, if you do the homing, uh, machine zero homing mode is set in the drive configuration. 
So there's a homing wizard here, so you can home to a home switch. Um, you can home to a positive or end of negative end of travel. Uh, after you home to the switch or the uh, end of travel sensor, do you want to then rotate the motor to the, the encoder pulse that's on the motor? Or uh, if it's a rotary application, you may just want to rotate the motor to the reference mark on the encoder. On the resolver, that's where the A and the, um, the sine and the cosine cross is where the reference mark is. Um, that's since there's actually not a reference mark on a resolver. And you can also home to a um, current limit as well, too. Anyway, if you don't have a home switch, you can just fake it out by saying, wherever I am, that's my zero position, uh, which is home mode 35. And then uh, that would require you to then do a finish and download to the drive. I've already done that, so I don't need to do that. So the actual position is right here being displayed. If I stop the move, um, I'm very close to 8,000 counts. When I click begin machine home zero, it doesn't actually physically move the motor, but it then resets the actual position. That's home mode 35. Uh, if you click this based on the drive configuration, if you're homing to a home switch, it will then begin the homing move. Uh, and then once that's found, it should reset to zero. So that's how you would set that up for a linear actuator. And then if you want to just hold the jogs, you can move back and forth. That's fairly straightforward. Um, but then if you want to go to the zero position um, or move back and forth that's the between moving to between two position points uh, you can also set up a relative test move which is just running continuously with a time delay in between the moves that appears as two uh, forward arrow icons and then you can see that the position keeps incrementing so you may want to change your scaling. That's why I like to look at the actual speed. Go on there. And I'm not going to get into tuning. There's a video in terms of how to tu do tuning and the auto inertia detection on both the rotary and linear servo motors. And then once you're done, you can click this, uh, stop. You can de-energize. Uh, if there's, as an advanced item, if you're looking in the help file and you see objects that aren't in the status display, and if you want to look at some more advanced parameters that are talked about in the help file, you can click on the menu here on the bottom, click activate object window. You'll see the fourth tab appear, which is objects, and then you can come into, and these are sorted by object number, so there's a few thousand different objects in the Compax 3. If you go into, let's say, um, objects, diagnostics, I have an encoder motor, but let's say I wanted to look at the all sensors. I can go into 691 and I can see 691.45 and 6 are my three different hall sensors. Um, that just gives you one example of something that wouldn't be in the status values. These are the same values based on the what the drive is configured at is, is just a subset, but if you want to look at more advanced objects, everything is in the objects tree on there. And so, um, sorry about my rambling. I'm going no script <laughs> today, just as a quick walkthrough. Um,
if you have any questions, feel free to email us, emn underscore support at parker.com. Hope you found this helpful. Uh, if there's any other videos you would like to see done or any other questions, feel free to ask us. Um, thanks and have a great day.